Hi, welcome. My name is Jared Smith. I'm an architect in the Next Generation Firewall Management Team, and I'm here with Veer from the DevNet team, and he's going to talk about the, fire, the Firepower Management Center and its REST APIs and the ability to automate the calls to create objects, and specifically looking in at network object. And there's a typical flow that lots of, lots of people in a, a network and security administrators will have to do when managing firewall rules because if someone will call in, they'll say, hey, I need to go add this object to a rule, so they'll want to automate that. So Veer, can you take us through what that looks like? Absolutely. Thank you, Jared. Um, hi, I'm Christian Veer. I'm developer evangelist with Cisco DevNet, and I focus on Cisco security technologies. And today, um, as Jared has mentioned, I'm going to talk about um, the Firepower Management Center APIs, capabilities to manipulate uh, crowd do CRUD operations on objects. So a lot of use cases require uh, this type of, uh, of functionality and few of them, like if you're writing a simple migration tool where you have to actually have a bunch of objects which, which is on device A and you want to move them to device B, you can write a tool so you, via, via FMC, you can actually transfer those uh, objects there and for that you would require this CRUD operation. So you will be reading and then writing or creating or updating on the new device. Or you, <clears throat> you are simply just you have a lot of bulk of um, uh, objects which you want to change. You have a bunch of FMCs. If you're a large enterprise, you have three, four FMCs, and you want to make those changes, you can actually push them. So there is a lot of automation uh, benefits you can get out of it. I mean, you can do the same thing with UI as well, but going to like 20 UIs, or, uh, and making those changes can be uh, error prone. So a lot, lot of that error can be taken away when you automate using APIs. So let's, let's, let's move forward and, and, and see. So what I'm, I have is a, a typical uh, sandbox. Uh, if you're using um, DevNet Sandbox, uh, which is, by the way, is available at developers.cisco.com. It's 24 seven, it's free. Uh, you are welcome to use it. You can use any social logins. You don't have to have a Cisco ID. It's, it's there. Um, you can reserve it. And once you reserve it, um, uh, it's, it's for you to play with. It's kind of like a pure play area. So generally what it looks like typically, it has um, a FMC. And that FMC has a next gen firewall and some uh, firepower devices. And these are generally all running in virtual mode. So um, you can actually um, uh, use them. So this, this user over here is typically going to be you uh, at home or at your work trying to use this. You have, once you get credentials, you reserve the sandbox. Uh, you will get access to the web UI, which you are already used to, which is our, uh, our FMC UI. Plus, you, you can write your own applications and, and, and make um, um, either using Python or using uh, Python or using Postman or um, a powerful tool which we actually bundle with um, uh, FMC, which is API Explorer. And, and I will cover a little bit more on that, how, uh, how good that uh, tool is. So let's quickly um, jump in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up um, um, our um, um, UI. This is actually our um, FMC UI. And if you have already used the product, you're already aware of it. So currently, it is showing all the objects, and, and, and especially because since we, got a, we decided to use one of the most used objects, which is network object. So on that, I, I have the list of objects which has been shown. One thing I want to mention, and um, if you're looking through this, this is, this is something is happening. The browser is actually alerting you that because the, the setup I have, I, don't, I have self-signed certificate. But if you have your own setup and you have your own uh, custom certificates, you probably already uploaded it because FMC allows you to do that. And so all this will go away. And this doesn't mean it's not secure. It's just the browser is warning that um, it's, 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 um, it's not secure because of the it doesn't want to accept or I have not accepted that self-signed certificate. So let's ignore that for now. And let's move on. So one thing I want to do is I want to bring up our API Explorer. And in other videos, I've covered a little bit um, about it. So you can go check it out. I've gone in depth and explained how API Explorer works. Yeah, generally, what happened is that on the FMC itself, 
you have to just add this into the uh, URL. So if you have IP address, you will be putting IP address here. If you have fully qualified uh, domain name like we have here, then all you have to do is add slash API slash API Explorer to invoke API Explorer. So in API Explorer over here, generally what is is the set of things which we have supported. So you could see we are running 6.2.3 here. That's the version which displays. These are the um, um, uh, different objects which have been supported, different resources which has been supported using APIs. So this is a great place to go. Actually, it is doc it's a documentation, and it ha also has a play area. And, and we're going to use this going forward. So let's clear this, and we're going to go to the objects. And we're going to scroll over here and figure out where our network object is. Over here, I think we, we, we tracked it. So um, I'm going to grab the pen here. This is the, the network object which we grabbed. So the methods which are supported here is get, which is to do the read. Post is where we create um, a new object. So if I have to create a new network object, I'll use post. Put is to update. Uh, if I have an existing object and I'm not happy with something in it or I have to add a description to it, I will use put. Uh, generally, when I use put, I have to do get first to figure out which object I want to uh, change the description for. Delete is if I want to, I'm completely unhappy with certain object, I want to get rid of them, or they're obsolete, I want to get rid of them. So I'll go one by one, get all the object, and go through them, uh, find, figure out their ID, and then delete them. So that's generally is how I will uh, operate if I'm writing scripts. And we're going to try to do this, these operations using uh, API Explorer. So first, what I'm going to focus on is um, getting the get object. So I want to keep it here. API Explorer actually explains uh, the, 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 how the data model looks like. So it gives you this description. You can read about it. It's very verbose. The other part it does really well, API Explorer, is that it gives you um, an example, so what to expect. So if you do a get method, um, uh, what you are looking for is the, is the response code, which is 200. And if it is 200, means it's a success. Something good happened. And then you actually will, will get um, a response body back, uh, data back, which will have a JSON payload, which you have to um, parse. And if there are multiple objects, then there is standard pagination techniques, which, which we have used. So, um, and most of you are probably aware of it if you're coding. So you have to go and, and subsequently uh, parse accordingly. So if I quickly um, clear the screen and come over here, and I actually going to execute this. For get, it's very simple. Um, either I can get a unique, if I know already the ID of a particular object, then I can actually put that ID, and I will only get one uh, uh, response back, which is that particular object. But if I don't, and I want to, I want to go through the list of it. I'll just press this. I'll get a complete list. Um, and over here, you would see that I'm getting all the lists. This generally means it's a success. Here, it's the 200 response. So if you if you toggle these. That's a 200 response. Another good thing about uh, this tool, which really excites me, so if you, if you are a person who is trying to learn how to code, you are new to the REST API, OK, you like, uh, you, you learned a little bit, you liked what this Explorer tool uh, offers you, you executed this get method. What it gives another powerful tool to you is actually whatever we did right now, like this get request, I can actually press a button and it can generate Python code for me. Isn't that amazing? I mean, this is like if I'm learning to code, this is amazing because now I can actually um, uh, have some way to get jump started really quickly. So you you see over here, it actually generated a Python code for me, and this is workable uh, Python code, and um, it's pretty awesome actually to can get we, going. Can we try this out and see it in action? Oh yes, Jared. So that's a good good thing. I think let's let's what we're gonna do. Um, what we're gonna do. What Jared asked is that does this code really works, right? So what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna copy this code and we're gonna paste it 
in a file, and we're going to see if uh, it executes. So let me uh, quickly try to uh, capture this. So I'm going to copy this code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, go to my console window, and I'm going to use my favorite editor, which is VI in this case. I'm going to create a file. And I'm going to just paste what I captured. So here I have the source code. Few things I may have to modify here. Uh, one of the things which probably um, is the username, because this is not the username I have in my uh, setup, and my password. So I have to definitely modify this. The other part I think uh, is important as well um, is, I'm, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, that I'm not using the correct SSL certificate. So over here, if you see, uncomment the line where verify is equal to false. So what it is saying is that do not verify my certificate. But by default, if you look at it, it has turned on the verification. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this line out and uncomment that line out where I'm saying that verify is false. So this is what I'm going to do. So let me clear this. And so first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go and change the, the, the username. So username in my case is actually um, API. So I'm going to use that as an API. And the second thing I'm going to do is change my password to be. Um, and uh, the other part, I think, which I talked about is make sure that I'm not using certificate. So I'm going to uncomment that line. I'm going to comment this line. So this is actually a, a line where I'm actually making a request. So you see I'm making a request is a Python package, which I'm, uh, I'm going to use, and I'm going to actually do a request. And that's why here, verify is false. So that's why I activated that. So this is where I think one of our uh, previous video I covered uh, token using um, um, token using uh, Postman. Here actually is the piece of the code where actually the token is, uh, is, 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 is this script is trying to get using Python, right? So um, another request is made where actually I'm going to do the, the get request. So I'm going to make sure that I uh, uncomment and comment this part as well. So I go over here, and I say comment this. I don't want to verify. I think this is it. Um, and so what I did, modifications, I put the username and password. So let's go back and recap really quickly, because if you want to try that at, at, at your time. So what I did is that I changed the username and password. I put what I have. In case you are using Dubnet Sandbox and you have reserved it, you will be getting an email in which you will have these credentials. So you will be using those credentials here. Then the second thing I did is made sure that I do not verify the certificates. So I commented the original line, which actually was verifying the certificate. And I comment, and I'm using the line where verify is equal to false. This is very important. Okay, So this is something which we should remember. The other part I'm trying, another change which I made in this code is same thing over here, because there is another request call where I'm actually doing the get. So I have two get requests. So one is the post request to get the token, which I showed you earlier. And this is the second request where I'm going to actually do the get on um, uh, my network object. So I made sure that I have this uh, uncommented out. So these are the two changes you have to do. Once you do these two changes, um, let me clear this so it's very visible. And so what I'm going to do, once I made that change, is I'm going to just uh, save this file. So it's v.py, and I'm going to just say python uh, veer.py. And this should execute my code. So here you go. So yeah, as you can see, it got the two uh, the the response back, and um, and it it actually works, which is amazing. So if you are learning to code, 
um, and you you don't know where to get started, this this API Explorer, that's the power of our tool, API Explorer, it gets you started to learn to code and create these automation scripts really fast. And this this is kind of good, you know, you, you're out there, you're thinking about how do I get this automation going, and this is a great way to get it, get it started. And you can build like collection of these scripts, and you can keep using them, and you can keep modifying them instead of reading JSON, uh, from the uh, uh, local variables, you can actually read it off files, you can keep exploring and making it more and more so verbose. You could, you could take that script and start enhancing it. Do you want to take the network objects and parse them and then do something else with them and update them and all kinds of things you could do. Absolutely. It's a great platform to get started. So let's, um, moving forward, let's, um, let's explore um, the, the network object here. Uh, now, since we did the read, now let's try to do um, uh, the post. So post is something where I'm going to create a new uh, network object. So um, another great place to get started when you're doing something new is like, I, I, I don't know how the data model looks like if I'm just brand new, how this, this is the place where you will just click on examples and it will show you, this is how a sample data model will look like or my JSON should look like when I do the post. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go and grab this uh, template and copy this and take it to the other side on my play window. And I'm gonna uh, close this. So over here, um, what I have is the name, so I'm going to give it a unique name. The value, what if I'm trying to set up a host or I'm setting a network, I will give that value over here. And then I'm going to put some um, description and, and, and type. So the only thing which I think it's modifying, I'm going to modify here is the name here. And I'm going to call it like uh, AAC. And I'm going to just modify this um, network a little bit. Uh, just going to call it like 10. Dot one. Let's make it like a, a single host. Um, and I'm going to just send it. Hopefully, it will give me success. So over here, you see I got the success. And then um, it probably um, created that and gave a unique ID. Um, why don't I go to the um, the UI and look at it, whether it has created. So you see over here, this is um, the object which, network object which we created. And and it got actually um, uh, uploaded here in the UI. One thing to uh, pay attention to um, is right here. So you see it, it actually was very smart, even though I gave it uh, use the network object, but it actually, um, uh, I just gave it an IP. So in internally, uh, the object figured out, hey, the user actually wanted to create a host. So it actually did the right thing for me instead of creating a network, which usually will look like this. Um, it actually created a host for me. Uh, when I go back to my uh, API Explorer, I have to be careful. Um, let me clear this quickly, that I should do a first, when I, my next method which I want to deal with in the CRUD operation on network is, uh, is my, uh, is delete, right? This, you may have something lying around which you want to get rid of. And so for, in our case, we just created a, a, that uh, object over here which is a severe, I want to get rid of it, I'll go back here. Uh, so first thing when you do delete is that you require this unique ID uh, of the object you're trying to delete. In case of network, uh, we just created that. So first thing we're going to do is actually go get, uh, do a get on that object and try to find its unique ID because we don't know right now. So, so what we'll do is that we'll quickly jump to the host because since uh, accidentally I created a host, I did not create a network, so I'll go to the host and I will actually do um, a, a get. And if you see here, um, it probably will, probably will show up here. Right here is my, uh, what I was looking for. This is the host I created. 
and this is the ID I'm looking for. So I'm going to just copy this ID and use this ID And I'm going to go actually, and uh, and actually I'm going to delete uh, using the the host because I, that's what I created. So I'm going to paste this over here, and I'm going to just do uh, delete on it. And there you go. So it has deleted the the object which I created. So this is how you do simple CRUD operations. So um, if, if we go in the UI and go yes. click back on there in the FMC and we refresh that, we should be able to see that that object's gone now, right? Um, absolutely. I mean, let's go and, and do a quick test on it. Um, so currently it looks like it's in, uh, if I refresh this, it should actually, um, uh, the object should have been gone from here. So once this refresh comes back, um, we will have this gone. So you see that object is gone. So one one zero 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 object is gone. Cool. So Excellent. that's a good check, and thanks for reminding that that we were able to successfully delete that object. So this is a, a great way to get going on uh, creating objects um, and uh, deleting objects or any type of object manipulation. You can do um, a lot of automation uh, going forward uh, once you uh, get the object under control. Thank you, Veer. It was great going through that and seeing, kind of live seeing how I, how I can make an object, how I can delete an object, and, and kind of do, do object cred here. I mean, it's great, great that we can do this and better automate our networks. Uh, we, we appreciate your time and hope that you get a chance to go visit the DevNet Learning Labs to further learn how to do things like this and to go experiment and try this yourself inside of a, a sandbox so you can go try it out there. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you.